a value to touch the screen real quick. Okay, and we are live. We are live. Okay. This is Steven Center talking to the band. I'm Steve. What's happening, Gabrielle? Hello. I'm not Cedric, but I am <laughs> the first lady of Steven Cedric <laughs> talking to the band. Absolutely. Absolutely. You Guest are. hosting today. Very excited to be here. Man, we, we want you right now, if you're listening in, to call, tag, and text somebody. Let them know that we're on live right now. Call somebody, tag somebody, and text somebody. If you have missed any of our previous episodes, go to our YouTube channel, subscribe to the channel, smash that like button and like those videos, and make sure you hit the alert button down below so that you will receive a notification when we upload new content. Gabrielle, where else can they find us at? You can also find you guys on Instagram and Twitter at Steve and Cedric talking to the band, and that's with a number two. That's right. So make sure you do that and follow us there. Today we are rocking with, I mean, a really hot, hot, hot artist as well as a pastor uh, here in the city of Rockford. Our main man, my friend, Justin Francis. What's happening, baby? <laughs> What's going on? What's going on? It's so good to see y'all. Thank y'all for having me on. I, I really appreciate it. I appreciate the opportunity. Man, it's a pleasure to have you, Pastor. Um, Man, just call me, you can call me Justin. <laughs> man. Pastor Francis. Man. No, no. And listen, and I go by Pastor Justin too, just to make it less informal and all of the extras. I don't do all the titles and all that. But no, it's been a lot. It's been a lot. Um, life has been good. You know, we just last weekend uh, had a busy, busy weekend. Uh, we we did the Mass Singer Rock for version, and then we uh, saluted one of my friends that, you know, died earlier this year in the midst of COVID, Ladita Lane. We had a musical for her Sunday, so um, I'm, I'm, I'm probably most rejuvenated now from the crazy pack weekend, which turned out to be a great weekend, but I've been good. I've been good. Man, you do a lot here in Rockford. I mean, I really admire, you know, your your zeal and, and your dedication to just pushing, you know, just the church forward. Um, and I want to get into a little bit of those questions as well, but also you have a record label that I, I saw you know, pop up in social media that you're launching. Talk to us a little bit about that. Man, so uh, the record label is something that's been a minute in the making. Mm -hmm. A lot of people, well, it's crazy. People don't know that have followed me more recently that I got my start for music. And I know we'll talk about that later, but I, um, it's been on my heart since I've been pastoring and I've been doing other things. I have been kind of neglecting music, um, but I just, I don't know what happened a, a few weeks ago. I just had like this itch, like I miss music. I miss writing. I miss recording. I miss being in the studio. So I literally put out my Pro Tools and I've been paying a subscription to update my Pro Tools every month that I've just been donating to Pro Tools because I ain't been using it. So I, I went and I literally just start writing to a track that I was sent months ago and start vibing with it. And it just felt good. And you know, I started thinking, um, you know, at church, our worship team has a different type of sound. So I was like, let's put a live worship um, project together. And instead of trying to get a deal for it and all of that, you know, I believe in creating platforms myself. So I said, why not, you know, launch this record company? What a better time now? And I'm excited. We're in November, we're having our first live recording and release some new music at the top of the year. So I'm so excited about um, the record company. It's been a long time to make it. Mm. Yeah, man. Sounds so cool, man. Um, you have a date? Before... You have a date set for that event, Justin? So yes, November 5th, Friday, November 5th. It will be at my church store assembly. Will be the free live recording. And I'm I'm ecstatic because all of the music I wrote. It's all um, six songs and they're all original. People haven't heard, they may have heard one or two, but it's gonna be, it's gonna be great. So yeah, that's gonna be November 5th. And the new music will come out. Um, I haven't announced it yet, but January 1st, you hear first. Uh, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Exclusive. Yeah. Exclusive. 
That's wonderful. That's what's up. That's what's up. Um, I mean, I, I watch you. Uh, sometimes I catch you on Sunday and um, catch some of the church service. You know, talk to us a little bit about state of the black church today and, you know, okay. where you see it going. Wow, that's a loaded question, the state of the black church. You know, I, here's what I would say. I, I um, feel like COVID wasn't kind <laughs> to any church. Um, definitely not the black church. I feel like the black church is yet alive as long as we stay progressive. One thing that I love about our ministry is it's different. So anybody that's been to one of our services or, or something, it's not typical at all from the lax to the, um, you know, to the attire to, you know, just the music um, to like tomorrow we're playing a game of life while I preach. So, you know, from the different side of it to the uniqueness. So I feel like the black church will continue to be, I watched the, I think it was called the state of the black church. It was a special that came on a few months ago, which was crazy. If you watch our, you know, from where we started to the sound to the legacy, but I just think we have to continue to be progressive. And I, I don't think anything about black people is monolithic monolithic at all and I think so so often we're grouped at, as this one thing and it's like if it's not this one sound if it's not this one way of preaching if it's not this one way of singing then we're trying to be quote-unquote whitewashed or we're trying to you know compromise so I think it's 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 nothing wrong with um, us evolving and it not just being one way and I think that's what would keep life that's what would keep breath in us because like I said my church um, from the outside looking in probably doesn't look as black as many other churches. Um, but I mean, we're very much so, and we have an authentic sound. I tell people, regardless of the music, we have an unmatched sound that transcends in whatever we do, mm -hmm. you know? So, so I think as long as we keep evolving, I think we'll be around, but I do think the church as a whole um, because of COVID and maybe even before then, you know, I remember I grew up in church and I was going to church all the time. Like we literally had service on Sunday. I grew up at St. Paul pretty much. Yeah. I, well, I spent my, um, you know, teenage years at St. Paul, let me say. So that was what I remember. And I mean, when we had church on Sunday, we had church Sunday night, we had rehearsal on Monday, you know, we had two, I mean, it was revival. We were at church and church. Yeah. This generation is definitely different. They're yeah. not the church crew. Um, they they want to be in church for an hour, an hour and a half, one day a week, and we good. So I think we have to make sure we keep abreast with the times. Um, I think if we fight the times, we're we're gonna get left behind. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, true, uh -huh. very true, very true. Go ahead, Gabby, you can jump right on in. Yeah, well, just going back to like you know your music and yeah. Again, something that really people, I know it seems obvious, but I don't know that people necessarily know that, you know, you are an artist, you know, yourself, just like what made you initially want to pursue a career in entertainment? Yeah, so a lot of people, uh, you know, you're 100% right, because of people know me as the words now, the radio, the pastor, a lot of people don't know the writing side, and I think I was about 12 or 13, and well, as long as I remember, I've been singing, I've been singing, uh, my mom used to, one thing that I always think and credit her is, I would have backyard concerts, sometime it would be on the front porch. Sometime it would be with some with some uh, spoons and some, you know, uh, it, it would literally with everything. And she would always push in the backyard. But um, I can remember writing um, probably about twelve or thirteen. I started taking that serious. Up until that point, it had just been singing with family members, doing concerts, doing different things. But I had probably went through a very traumatic. Well, not probably, but I had went through a very traumatic, um, you know, stage in my life. And I had experienced some trauma. So I wanted, I needed a way and an outlet to vent that. I needed a way to, you know, kind of share that. And music ended up being my therapy. Mm. So I can remember maybe about 14, 15, I was writing and I was writing music about where I was at life. A lot of it had darker undertones at those <laughs> times. Um, but I was writing where I was at and what I was feeling. And um, in writing that, um, led me to, you know, meet some people. Um, I actually will never forget 
the gospel music workshop of America that uh, my godma, uh, Miss Ann, Ann uh, Holloway and Walter Washington used to do at St. Paul. And um, for years they had had it and I would just come to the workshop and I would go to a songwriter's class by, um, it was a guy named Percy Gray that a lot of people know who wrote music and gospel. And he used to take the songwriting class and you know, I think for maybe a year or two, my mom even went with it with with me to the class, and I would write music, and I would I think at the end of the week we would submit it after the full week of him telling us stuff, and I can remember one week I played a song called "Try Me Over Again" that I wrote, and he was like that song was really good, and he told me that he wanted to invest in my first um, five CDs, um, my first five um studio sessions and he sent me to Chicago and yeah and he invested in it we recorded some demos and Joshua Troop which was a group out of Chicago national recording artist ended up recording my first song I think oh back I can't remember which year but I was like 16 17 and I'm 32 now so you know they released it and you know we I just started writing from there and 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 you know, connected with more people, but that's where it started. Now, are you still writing? Yeah, you know, I, up until, like I said, the last couple of weeks, I had been taking a break for like the last five years. I have um, wrote quite a bit of music, some that has been released, some that's been placed, some that's been on radio, some that's done well, some that hasn't done so well, to where I think just with life happening lately, I wasn't in the music space. Like, I was just kind of you know, like, hey, if an opportunity comes to the table, it does. But just to be transparent, I have a lot of music that's still in my email, that's still sitting on the shelf, that nothing's happened to. So I think I just kind of was like, hey, unless it's bringing in a lot of money or unless, you know, my heart is really there, I, I have other things to do. But now I'm starting to get the, the, the itch back, like I said. So now I'm back writing. But the last projects that I wrote for that were released a few years ago was for Joshua Rogers who had one Sunday best a few years ago and virtue so those were the last projects that I actually wrote on that's amazing so I know one thing one fact about you that I do know is that you love brandy I know you still love brandy <laughs> I do so, I do I, think, I do I sometimes when I see brandy or hear brandy I think about you because I'm like I know that I know it's one of your favorites so like yes. who like what other artists do you love like what I always I always want to know if people if you were driving to California and you mm -hmm. only had three CDs that you could take with you what wow. what would that music be for you like what are your top like I can listen to this over and over and it never gets old to me Wow well are we talking about CDs or just artists artists well, just the album an okay. artist oh. whatever whatever however okay. you want to take that question so you definitely are right uh and and if we're talking about albums her full moon never say never just oh. classics classics never get old um and i love the musicality that she's brought you know to music so definitely my number one would be brandy and a lot of my music has been influenced by her sound i would also have to say um kurt franklin i've loved kurt franklin mm -hmm. uh you know i know that's such the gospel answer you know to, <laughs> but i just love kurt Legend. He's cold. Kurt. He's cold. yeah he's a legend yeah I, yeah I love kurt um you know there's a few people but i have to say anything clarks and jay moss so whether that be the clark sisters combined whether that be uh the clark sisters separately from dorinda karen to jay moss kiera that whole you know that whole um family tree of music and then you know I'm very versed I love R&B music too so you know uh, I love some Joe I love uh, yeah. you know yeah, yeah I love some Joe I love I love some uh Chris Brown I mean I just I love I'm right. versed in music so it just depends on where I'm driving a lot of the music that I love if we're talking about a highway trip I may put on some some more upbeat stuff that the church folks probably wouldn't like me to put on <laughs> just to keep me awake <laughs> one but um no i like all kind of music but those are definitely my top okay that's what's up so just to maybe switch gears a little bit from the music you know i i consider you uh what i call mega gifted you're a person that taps into a lot of different areas you've written you 
have you doing award shows you got a radio station you win in stellar awards you're a pastor you're a father you're a husband like you you wear a lot of hats and i feel like sometimes people and, and and you still have gifts you haven't even tapped into yet and you know that and sometimes people don't know where to start like they know they have so much inside of them and like i know that god has given me all these things to do but i don't know where to start is there yeah. any like advice that you could give people like how do how do i if i have all these things inside of me that i want to do but where do i begin what kind of advice well, can you yeah. offer on something like that man mm -hmm. you know uh good question i think you even though I think we all are multifaceted, I think we all have some niche, like a niche that is something that we do well. But at the same time, I'm kind of contradicting myself because I think sometimes we box ourselves as to just the one thing. This is what I would say. I will say this. Um, one thing that I don't like is when we start and stop a lot of things. Mm -hmm. So whatever you do, at least finish it before you do something else. And, you know, I'm big on myself. I'm, I'm still learning balance, but make sure you don't, um, you know, major something before you start something new. So I think uh, it's nothing wrong with having multiple things, but pick, you know, during different seasons, you, no matter how much we think we're Superman or Superwoman, you, you're only one person. So you can only do one thing at one time. Now that doesn't mean you can't do certain, you know, certain areas, but nine times out of 10, something's gonna go lacking. So if you're giving your all in this arena, something's gonna take a back seat. That's because I've been heavily involved in music and the award show. I mean, the, the award show and ministry music has taken a back seat. So be okay with, you know, different seasons will require different parts of you you know, um, and don't feel less of yourself, but, you know, be honest with yourself. And, and the great thing about it is, you know, because God has blessed me with mega gifts, maybe right now ministry is hot, but maybe that will slow down to where I can tap into, you know, music or whatever. So look at it as, as a good thing, <laughs> excuse me, but make sure you balance and pace yourself at the same time. Mm -hmm. That's great advice. Yeah, pace yourself, pace yourself, pace yourself, because I'm talking to myself too, because one of my uh, deficiencies or one of the things that I know I can grow in is sometimes I, I believe everything should happen now. So mm -hmm. in learning that things take time, you know, that's sometimes hard for me. So. so you just said deficiency. What What do you wish you were good at that you're not? Ah, a lot, a lot. Um, sports. You know, well, here's the thing. I say I wish I was good at it, but I'm not like mad that I'm not good, but I'm like, God, could I have got like at least one sport that I was dope at? Um, and maybe, yeah, and maybe if I applied myself to it more, I could. I was like the kid that grew up uh, and I, I tried soccer, I tried baseball. I tried basketball, everything but football, and I like kind of sucked at all of them. So, uh, you know, you know, maybe sports. I wish I could. I wish I could dance, because I was like, if I could dance, she wouldn't be able to tell me nothing. What? So I, you I wish two I left could. feet, Justin. You got two left I feet, bro. I can't, I can't. I mean, I can do something, but yeah, yes, it's not my lane. It's not my lane. It's not my lane. So it's a lot of stuff I wish I could do, but just just the name two. Those are two that I wish I could do. Well, at least one thing that I've always like appreciated about you, and especially because my background is communications and marketing, is that you you focus on the brand. Like you get that we as people we are a brand. Mm -hmm. um, so I just want to know your thoughts on like just personal branding and why people should take it seriously. Why it's not just a business thing. Um, it's really just something that you should. Well, I'm gonna let you. I'm gonna let you respond. What, how, how do you feel about just having a personal brand and what that means to just the outside world? It means everything. And the brand is not something you can turn on and off. You're your brand when you walk out the house. You're your brand when you're on a Zoom call. You're on your brand when you're in your office. No, branding is everything. We're in a society where, especially in this cancel culture society that we're in, um, you branding is everything and how you present yourself how you represent yourself the total package is everything I think I, I told you guys um off the air that how you package your product whether it be an album cover I've, I've always told people and I've joked about it but I mean it um 
I'm not interested in being on a flyer that's made on Microsoft Word clip fire. Like at the end of the day, we've got to invest in ourselves. And if I quote unquote, if I'm in a market where I'm not, I don't, and I know we're not here to be competitive, but if I'm here and my product is here to compete with something else that's on the radio or something else that's you know out here, it can't look like that because the truth be told, it may never get looked at. So you have to make sure you invest in your brand. Um, I also think this this culture sometimes, I'm just very careful even on social media. And sometimes people say I'm too cautious. I'm overly cautious. Um, I just, I'm big on wanting to protect my brand. So if protecting my brand means that I can't go everywhere, mm. if protecting my brand means that, that an award show is on and I have an opinion about a singer and I just got to keep it to myself or text a friend, if, if protecting my brand means that, you know, if you're next to me with a red cup, we may have to take a picture on the other side, you know, whatever that is, I'm big on my brand because at the end of the day, it takes one time to, you know, one moment to have to spend years to recover wow. your brand. So I have to be strategic about every move, but branding is everything, everything. It's like, you can't, you can't do anything without it. You are a brand. And I have several brands that I represent or that I'm the face of. So, um, you know, but here's the other thing about branding. And I'm conscious about this too. Um, I think branding should be bigger than you. So what do mm. I mean? Mm. Um, I've been the first one mistake that I made when I started so Radio. And I know we haven't talked about it much. But when I started so Radio, um, I put myself on all of the stuff. I put my picture on it. I put my face on it. And when people saw Soul Radio, they saw my picture. Well, I don't remember who it was, but one of my friends from somewhere else told me, take your stuff out of all the things. And I was like, why? And it wasn't even that I was posting it like to be arrogant or to, you know, in, in a boastful type of way. It just was what I did. And he was like, you never know who, a couple of different things. You'll never know who may be of another race that may support your brand if you're not the face of it, one. Mm. Um, but the second thing is I tell people, people always say, what's the secret to you having an event and people supporting it? Well, I make the event to where even if you don't like me or even if you're not a fan of me, I'm bringing somebody or something that you like. So it's bigger than me. You know, mm -hmm. Soar Radio is bigger than me. I don't need to be the picture of it because I want people to see Soar Radio, not me. Because God forbid, if something happens to me, if I die, I get sick or I can no longer do it, the brand should not dissolve because of that. But Soar Radio, Soar Awards, everything should be bigger than me that it's able to sustain. I see so many brands that when the leader's not there or when the leader's absence or when the leader's no longer putting it together, it all falls down. And I, I, I've worked too hard for all of my brands to see that. Wow. Wow. That's, that's, that's really good. Yeah, that was that's good. fantastic. And it's important too. I, I agree with you. You have to uh, broaden, broaden your, your brand, you know, mm -hmm. uh, it has to go beyond you. So that's, that's really good stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so justin we live in a unique city right rafa's unique and i feel <laughs> like we have a unique set of challenges that we're working to overcome and because okay. of that it can seem to some that there isn't hope but i've always seen you as someone that has never seen your geographical location as a barrier to success and opportunity so where do you think that that comes from? Because I don't think you, I've, you, you're not a small thinker. You don't think Rockford minded. You think internationally, you think globally, you think large, yeah. you think A list, you don't think B list. So where does that yeah. come from inside you? And just some words of advice to tell people like in our city, like how, just the opportunity that's available to you. For sure. Um, so yeah, that's probably the most asked question I get. Why are you still here? Or, you know, what do you, you know, see Rockford is so small minded, all of that. But to answer your question, um, it's a word that begins with an E called exposure that I think has been the secret to me thinking bigger, you know, um, I mean, I've been blessed with one, um, with Mary, my wife, even her being exposed to things, you know, has even broadened my, you know, my thinking and made it more vast, even in the last five, six years. Um, but even, you know, up until then, the, what I would say is just going, what I would say, even 
with the awards and with the radio. Nothing that I've done per se is what, well, you know, the Bible says nothing's new under the sun. So nothing per se that I've done, am I the first one to do it? You know, it may be the first to hear, but I went somewhere and saw somebody else doing it and probably saw somebody else doing it better than me. And since you brought up here, the, the issue and deficiency we have is we're really behind. So um, where people will see, oh my gosh, how are you doing this? If you go to another city, it's like something they've been doing for five or 10 years. But I think um, exposing myself, I'm also, I've used, um, the World Wide Web to my advantage. Like everybody always bashes to social media and trust me, there can be some bad sides to it. But growing up, almost all of my musical connections that I've made up until this point, because it's, it's a, especially this industry is a relational industry. So it was basically off of social media. It was off of, and I was reading um, one of my friends, Michelle Williams T, her book, Checking, Back, Checking In, and mm -hmm. she made a comment and said in this season, she's strategic about her friendships. So even if that makes her look a little thirsty, she said, or a little you know, desperate, if she knows that somebody that has something she wants, she's strategic about that. So even with me, I'm strategic in this season about you know, connecting with people that are farther than me. And I've always, you know, most of the people that I've grown gap from, even when I started the ministry and everything, mm -hmm. they are bigger than me. They're not from here. They may live in big, bigger markets. They've been exposed to things. And that's, you know, iron sharpens iron. So mm -hmm. that's what's kept me, my wheels tuning. And I know right now God has me at this season. And there's, there's a lot of good here. There's a lot of good here. There's a lot that's untapped, untapped. And, um, you know, there's a lot of, I just think there's a lack of exposure here. There's a lot of people that I know, there's people that haven't, don't even really go on the other side of the river. So I know there's people. And I think part of our issue is some of us think we're great, but when we get to Chicago, 60 miles, we find out, oh, you know, we still got some work to do. And I think being connected to people that are, smarter and bigger than me has humbled and um, shown me that I have a lot of work to do. But like I said, I don't believe in talking bad. I know a lot of people here talk bad about Rockford. And I say, if I talk bad about Rockford, I'm talking bad about myself because right. I'm here, right. you know, and I've pretty much been here with the exception of when my mom went to college. Um, we moved in Des Moines for six years, but other than that, I've been here my whole life. Um, so I, I think it has a lot of potential and Rockford's been good to me. Rockford's been good to me. And um, I think too, cause I hear oftentimes where people say, well, they don't support, but I think sometimes one, our, going back to branding, one, our marketing sometimes is off. People don't can't support what they don't know, you know, is here. And I think sometimes too, you know, I don't know a nice way to say this, but sometimes we just don't have stuff worth supporting. Mm. Mm. You know what, Justin, I, was, I just want to cut in here real quick. So I'm, I'm listening to your answers. Um, you're a real interesting young man. Mm -hmm. What's your why? And how do you find balance in all that you're trying to do? I know you're a family man. I know that's important to you. But what, mm -hmm. what's Justin's why? Wow, my why. Um, you know, my why is this is what I was created to do. Like my why is, um, you know, since you brought up the family part, obviously they're, they're my natural why. I want to leave a legacy. But really, this is what I was created to do. You know, I, I have no other peace than to do what I'm passionate about. And, um, you know, there's so many people out here that have so much inside of them that they're just waiting for somebody else to come and do the work for them. And if I can just encourage them that they have all the resources within them to do it, I believe what I'm doing is not in vain. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I I wasn't handed anything. You know, I I um I, I didn't ha I didn't have it where, you know, my family grew up in a wealthy home or where I grew up where you know they were established and then you know I had to work for all of this so um you know my why is 
and and I, and 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 here's what I always say in my besides I, one thing that I live by with well, two things that I live by is Joyce Myers um which it would change me she had a message called do it afraid I live by that one so everything I do I do it afraid but secondly um where there's not a platform you build your own and that's been my theory on everything um, not waiting for somebody else to give me the opportunity that God has already, you know, um, already blessed me with, already blessed me that. with. I love that. So doing it afraid, um, cause if it doesn't challenge you, it doesn't change you. So yeah. what would you say is one of the most challenging things that you've had to work on to date? Wow everything <laughs> um everything nothing has been easy um ugh, i mean all of it all of it i would say the award show has been challenging the ministry has been challenging but it's been rewarding i mean everything everything's been challenging i'm trying to think if there was one particular um thing i mean i would probably say um the award show and and the ministry probably are the most too challenging. Um, I would say early on the the radio, but I've just matured. Well, not the radio. I'm sorry, doing music and hearing a lot of no's, a lot of the, not yet and all of that. But I would say probably the award show going through transitions. So whether that means transitions through personnel, whether that means transitions through artists, transitions through band, transitions through singers. Oh, that's probably been the hardest because every year, you know, it says every round goes higher. So as you go higher, maybe people that were good in that season aren't good here. And, you know, um, just navigating through that, navigating from the local end, but also the national end, the, the award show is not just a Rockford thing, um, but the award show is in gospel music, it's the second biggest gospel televised award shows than the Stellars. So it comes with a lot of pressure. And um, I think sometimes people here don't even realize the magnitude that the industry has really bought in, bought in with it. So I think, um, I think the award shows probably been the most challenging, but it's also been the most rewarding as well. And the ministry comes with, the ministry comes with, it's a beast too. Um, but it's a different set of problems, or I shouldn't say problems, but it's a different set of things that you navigate through. Mm. So wow. just, uh, you're a big thinker. So what's, uh, your, what's a big goal that maybe you'd be willing to share with us that we would never expect from you? Wow. Now, something that you say you would never expect makes it harder because I have several goals, but um it may not be something um, that you will accept. Well, here's here's one. Um, I don't know how big it is because I'm not far from it. And I don't say that in an arrogant way, but just because I know I'm getting there. I really want to have um, the award show, obviously, on like a BT. That's the one thing we haven't had. Mm. It. Like a BT or obviously yes. or by um, CBS or VH1 or TV1, something like that would be a big goal. But I don't feel like I'm that far from it. We've been on the Word Network. We've been on national TV. Um, we've been on Black News Channel. Um, so I think that would be one. Um, yeah, I have some other ones, but I don't know that I want to share. But that would one. probably be <laughs> that would probably be the biggest one. I would think that would be the biggest one. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'd love to be a billionaire. <laughs> I'm a little <laughs> far from there. Um, but <laughs> I'm not as close to that. Um, but yeah, I think the I think in the short future would be the award show to see it on network TV. For sure. Well, since you don't want to share that, share something that people don't know about Justin. <laughs> there's a lot, and it depends who the people are, because there's people that are supposed to be known. I'll just share a fun fact um, about me. I have to have, so my close friends know this, and people that are around me, but all of my food has to be cooked lightly. So um, as a fun to fact. Say, I think so, it's about the cookies. The yeah, cookies so and the bread. The fun, the cook, just anything. I love bread, but I'm, I've been on this health kick, so I've been trying to pull back. But um, all of the food that I eat has to be cooked light. So whether that means a burger that has to have some pink in it, whether that means uh, a hot dog, from whether that means a pancakes to anything, I refuse to eat anything that's not lightly cooked. So people that are around me know that. 
Um, but yeah, wow. I don't eat that anything. It has to be really fun not. at restaurants. <laughs> it, but I'm very nice about it. I'm very nice. I always give them a heads up and, you know, uh-huh. very lightly, lightly if they have to take it back, they have to. But that's probably one of the things that maybe the average person wouldn't know, but people that are around me definitely know that. And, but I will say here, here's another thing. I will say that uh, a lot of people don't know I'm an introvert. So mm. because mm because I'm like everything I do is in front of people and because I'm speaking talking and all of that but I'm naturally introvert I don't like crowds I don't love being around people I'm a homebody I would just be fine I would the pandemic wasn't all bad for me Mm -hmm. um you know (laughs) but I'm an introvert so I don't like the small talk I don't like all of that I don't like the you know, I would be happy with, and I love people, so don't get it twisted, but I would be happy with going to an event, coming when it starts, leaving right before it's over, so I don't have to, like, I'm just an introvert by nature, kind of how I'm built, but. Steve, I know you have some questions about the radio station in New York. Yeah, I, do. I just want to ask this one thing, Justin, really fast. Is yes. Are you giving me some bread? I, I take notes. I feel like I can learn from everybody. So I've me taken too. some notes here while you've been speaking. Um, but I just want to know, like, what do you feel like is some of the best advice you've ever been given? And correct. And let me say this, too. Let me say this, too. Congratulations to you. Oh, thank you. You are the alderman with in my, my war for the, yes. not where I live, but, you know, yes. the church. We, so I want to say that was made. We need to get together and, and yes. collaborate and just, just know that you have my support. I see what y'all are doing. You haven't needed me, but it. if you need me, you have me. I appreciate it. So I appreciate we will, it. We, will, we got four years to collaborate, and we will. We will. Yes, yes, Thank yeah, you. I will. I'm sorry. I just wanted to say that. What I appreciate your that. Again? Yes. I wanted to know about, about just advice. Like, what's what's some great advice that you've been given, or some of the best advice that you've been given? Um. Wow. Um. I've been given a lot of advice. Um. You know. The biggest advice that I would say is just try. As simple as that is, you know, the worst thing that can happen is you fail. Like, you know, but just try. At the end of the day, I don't want to live this life um, not trying, at least, you know, and I don't want to, or I don't ever want to live in the what if it doesn't work or the coulda, woulda, shoulda. So I would just say um, just to try whatever ideal it is, whatever vision it is whatever thought it is, just go try it. Go try it. I would say it's it just simple is try it. Like I said, do it afraid. I kind of said that was my ready, which is the one I live by, but try it. And, um, you know, I, I have this philosophy, you know, the young folks say YOLO, you only live once. You know, I have this philosophy. You don't, you don't know what's going to happen with life. You know, we, our church opened up during the pandemic we were one of the churches to actually be open. I mean, we closed for the four months, but then when the governor, you know, said we could open, um, we did some, we did funerals and we did a total of about 65 funerals in 12 months. And half of them were younger, half of them were my age or younger. Mm. So that showed me that life is not promised. Mm. So while you have breath, um, make sure you have life insurance. And make sure you, um, you know, do whatever it is that you need to do while you're here. Wow. <clears throat> Justin, man, really, really good stuff, man. Very interesting, uh, young man. Um, Soar Wars, Soar Radio. What's next for them? Soar Wars, I'm excited. You know, we're back. We, we. It was so crazy. The 2020, we honored Ty Tribbett, Mary Mary. And literally, they were talking about the cold coronavirus. It was like the Chinese in China being at that time, but we didn't really know what was going on. But it was only by God's grace we were able to have it. Four days later, the country shut out that year. Um, so we didn't get to have last year because of obviously COVID. Um, but we're back. We're back next year in March and we're excited we're honoring um Dorinda Clark Cole we're honoring um we're honoring why am I having a brain freeze we're oh we're honoring Dorinda Clark Cole we're also honoring Bishop William Murphy we have Karen Kiera John McReynolds Natasha Cobb so many that's coming Um, I'm excited this year I have an awesome awesome team 
um, that were coming, uh, band singers, awesome material. I feel like, and I say it every time, you know how you hear artists and you interview them and you ask them about the CD and they say it's the best work yet every mm -hmm. time. And I feel that about this, this will be year five. Wow. And um, I just feel like, you know, I've learned from a lot of mistakes. Last year, Jennifer Hudson came. And that was probably the biggest shock. Like when we got a call, I think it was maybe like a day before somebody DM'd me and was like, hey, I'm Jennifer Hudson's people. She wants to come to the show. Can you call me? So I'm like, this is somebody hacking or somebody joking, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I caught them and they were like, no, really. She wants to come with like a, she had eight people with her and she'll buy tickets, but she just wants to come and sit in the back. She saw it on social media. She loves the people. And she literally came. And um, when I tell you everybody has been at the show, I always say minus, I think, Kurt, Yolanda, Donnie, and Cece. I think those are the only people that haven't like actually been here. Everybody else has been here. So, you know, I want to keep bringing more people. I love that the show is a happy medium between major gospel artists and major independent artists. So it's like, the big the a-listers but also has some up and coming and some indies so i want to keep that thing like i said i want to um i want to um as i said do a network tv but the biggest thing is i, I don't want to give all the details yet but i'm excited about it moving yeah. and what i mean by that is um yeah. you know i'm excited about after this year seeing it evolve in different locations i'll leave it at that all right. Cool. Soar Radio. What's next? You know, Soar Radio has been awesome. We just celebrated seven years. Oh, um, wow. Soar, yeah, thank you. And in the third year of it, um, many people know Soar Radio became the first gospel internet station in the world to be monitored by BDS, Nielsen BDS. So people are like, okay, what's Nielsen BDS? If you know the Nielsen, you know, that tracks yeah. your TV and all of that, um, yeah. they track 50 gospel terrestrial stations. So that's AM, FM. But um, we reached out to them about starting to track internet mm. four years ago. And we were the first. And now there's like 50 of them. No, maybe like 40, 30 or 40 in five mm. years. Um, so that was a game changer. But the thing that I love about Soar Radio is it kind of just works for itself. It's a baby of mine that I don't have to do a lot for. You know, I do a morning show, which I would love to do more mornings, but it's just kind of crazy schedule. But I do from 6 to 9 a.m. in the mornings on Wednesdays. We do a live show. We interview up and coming people. We or interview national as well as local people. We also um, play music and do hot topics. So news topics, we're on there with a panel of people every week. Um, but also we have over 12 other shows that from Lori and Lisa Happy Times to Regina's show to, um, you know, other shows that broadcast from New York and from Chicago and now one from Atlanta. So we have uh, quite a bit of shows besides mine that Soar Radio has been a platform all over the country. So they, they pretty much push themselves. So I want to continue to see um, store radio um, push. I would love to have a couple, um, not campuses or offices, I can't think of the word, but a couple or more satellite sites all over the country. I love to have some of those um, on uh, as store radio grows. But store radio, it, 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 it's, it's pretty much pushed itself and it's kind of like the umbrella, like that the SOAR Awards falls under. The reason the SOAR Awards are able to do what we do is because we have a BDS monitor station. So that's what brings a lot of the artists and the, a lot of the attention. So it kind of is like a, a warehouse to allow us to do other things. But I would love to see, um, once this COVID subsides even more, us to be more active in the community doing stuff too. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's amazing, man. That's amazing. Where can people find you? How can they get in touch with you and or, or book you or you know uh, learn more about what's going on? Uh, give us the information how they can get in touch. Sure. So um, through you can get in touch with me multiple ways. I'm on social media. That's probably the best way. Um, Justin Dewan Francis, you can access me there. I mean, my, my, I have soarradio.com. I have soarassembly.com. 
you can get me on any of our Facebook pages, but I actually am pretty active on social media. So I like to, I don't have an assistant um, now or anything. So I like to respond and do all my stuff. So people can directly reach out to me on any of my social media platforms. It's probably the easiest way to find me. Man, Justin, this has been an honor, bro. Mm -hmm. an honor to have you on the show. Definitely. I've been, I've been looking forward to this conversation. Um, great information you've given out and just your journey um, is one that's, you know, very interesting and needs to be told, man. And I'm glad yes. you're able to have you here on this platform to, to share, you know, man, I, I appreciate it. You know, it's, I always tell people every part of the journey is for a reason. So mm. every, I don't take away anything that I've experienced. It all had to happen, you know, for the bettering of me. So I'm grateful for the journey. I, I used to not, there was a time where I got frustrated with the journey, yeah. but now I can honestly say I'm grateful for the journey. But being on here has been awesome because a lot of times I'm on the other side of it. So yeah. I'm interviewing other people <laughs> and, um, you know, I'm asking them the questions. So it's kind of interesting to hear people ask, you know, me the stuff that I ask other people. So it's been awesome, awesome. I love it. I love it. Man, thank you so much. That means a lot coming from you. Um, we were both new at this, Cedric and myself, and the first lady, we just launched out with this platform, and you saying that, man, means a lot to us, you know, so thank you so much, man, thank you for your time, thank you for all you're doing in the city of Rockford and globally, yes. um, just keep doing it, man, I'm, I'm excited about what's to come, uh, mm -hmm. let people know again about the SOAR Awards, when will it be, I know it's on my birthday, March 7th is my birthday, so, um, oh, yeah, it's March 7th. I'm excited about it, but this again, just let people know more about the SOAR Awards and how they can get tickets and all of that. For sure, yes. So March 7th, um, it is. And it usually changes every year. We try to do it around that March time, try to do it at a time where it's not too cold, but it's you know not summer months. Um, but it will be at, used to be called Heartland Church, but they renamed to Forest City Church. Um, it will be there Monday, March 7th. We like to do our shows on Monday nights, which are different. Um, but it's Monday, like I said, we're having, um, we have everybody's going to be there from Bishop William Murphy to the Clarks to Jonathan McReynolds, uh, uh, Tasha Cobbs Leonard. It's hosted by Todd Delaney. Todd Delaney. Um, also, yeah, yeah Todd Delaney's hosting it. Yeah, he's, he hosted last year with Michelle. He's great. And um, yeah, the year before, I think it was Kim Burrell, then Donald Lawrence and Michelle. It's been, we've had some awesome hopes. Um, so it's going to be, uh, you can get tickets now at soar.ticketlocity.com. Um, we've been pushing it hard from now until then. We also have the live recording that is coming from Soar Records November 5th. And um, that is free. So those are my two right now, babies. Those are the two events I'm pushing. I always am pushing my ministry. We're growing. Uh, we, I celebrate the small beginnings. So we're only two years old. And, you know, we um, have rebranded, revitalized, and we're, we're over 200 members strong in two years. So I'm grateful we're continuing to grow. So I'm always inviting people on Sundays at noon. We have an hour and a half. Um, yeah, so we're always up, having something. You got a service with your fish and free fish, a fish dinner? Yes. What, so that? people, yes. So Soar Assembly, I always like to do different stuff. So what we decided last month was to do a themed year. So the, the second half of this year is themed. So every Sunday. So we did um, this Sunday, where well, this month is themed on uh, Don't Take the Bait, but it's also themed on games. So we played Connect Four. I literally played Connect Four as I preached last Sunday. <laughs> and tomorrow we're playing the game of life and the next Sunday, Monopoly. Um, but I'm excited because on the 22nd, it's going to be at the movie Sunday, which we're having free popcorn, free candy concessions while I preach. Uh, it's going to be awesome. And then the following week, which you're talking about is the 29th, um, we're talking about catching. We're looking for people that don't have other church homes. And yes, free spaghetti, fish fry after service. But the theme is about fishing. So we're going to be in fisherman gear and um, I'm just excited. It's something different. So we're always trying to find different cool ways um, to reach people. And then the following Sunday, I, I'm, I'm not telling the whole itinerary, but I'm really excited about the following Sunday because it's called, we're asking all our members to wear their work uniforms. And mm -hmm. why? Because I'm preaching a message about support and resources. And you never know who you have in the house. 
So we're going to, um, you know, just let people know who, who they go to church with, who their fellowship, who's in their wow. network. So wow. we try to do different things. Um, but yeah, but yeah, come join us on noon. We have an hour 15 or hour 30 minute service. Uh, we have a good time every Sunday. But yes, it is free fish on the 29th. Great, great. And how can they get tickets again to the SOAR Awards? Where can you get the tickets? Yes, soar.ticketlocity.com. So that's soar.t. Yeah, ticket velocity, T I C K E T um, velocity, L O C I T Y. Okay. Great, great. Man, Justin, thank you for your time, my man. Justin, you are amazing. Appreciate thank you so much. Absolutely. Wow. Pastor Justin thank y'all. Francis. <laughs> I appreciate it. I appreciate it. You have it blessed me again. today. You have blessed me today. And I'm sure you've blessed everybody that's watching. You're right, right. Wow. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, man, thank you so much. Gabrielle, that's all I got. All right. Well, we out of here. Take care. Y'all have a good night. Everybody take care. All right. See you later. All right. I'm out of here. Later.